everybody. Welcome to Whiskey Mystery. I'm Phil. I'm Diva. <coughs> <laughs> oh, I should have some water, shouldn't I? How's everyone doing? Guten Abend. I see our German friends are in. <laughs> uh, what are we doing today? Of course, we are blind tasting. We are blind tasting our way through over 200 whiskies. We are up to number 95, and this one was picked by Tim Donner Pass. I thought it was smoky when we had our first sip. Remember last week, I thought it was smoky, but it's just a stinky sherry. <laughs> oh, quite big bubbles though, aren't they? Quite big bubbles. Before we get into this one today, why don't we try some other sherried whiskies first? Because let's do the ABV thing. Pretty big bubbles. Here's 48 comparison. Bigger than that. Here's 56. And those bubbles are still... Oh, it's pretty close, actually. I remember thinking the Edradour 12 was a dirty sherry. And it smells a little more sulfury. Hmm. Yep, more dirty. More dirty. And then... Something a little stronger, the McLean, McCallan <laughs> Classic Cut. Very um, gassy. I mean, Sweet. much Clean. much sweeter and fruitier, isn't it? Now, but having said that, a little bit of sulphur on the end of the McCallan. And it's a bit watery. Watery, it's 51%. Yeah, the mini is quite weak. Oh, you mean the flavours are kind of thinner? Thinner and soft finish. Yeah. Now, let's just go in and have a sip on full strength. We'll come back to water in a minute. So we kind of ramped up from mild Glenfarclas, you know, through the others up to the Macallan. And I suspect this is going to be more powerful based on what I remember from our pre-tastings yesterday. So here we go. Much bigger on the nose, deeper and matchsticks. Mm. Okay. That is something like taking the depth of the Glendronach. It's got more power than the Macallan and a bit of the dirtiness of the Edra Dower, but ABV all higher. Mm. Okay. Wow, the finish can go on and on and on. Well, yes, the finish is long as well. <sighs> okay, let's back off a little. And uh, the flavour of uh, the fat up is also dirty, sulfury. Yeah, dirty, sulfury. And there's no smoke. I thought there was smoke, but. Um, oh, I don't have an empty glass. But when I did the empty glass pour, I didn't get any smoke at all. You know, sometimes when you've just got those matchstick sulfury dirty notes, it can come across as smoky. We call this one bitter plums and matches because <laughs> that's kind of what it's like. There, wow, there's... Even in the water down one, it's there's a deep richness to it, and isn't there? And suffer. Okay, not strong ABV, obviously, because it's probably only twenty-five to thirty. I'm waiting for the finish because that's always what put me off. Because when you tasted it, that little sip last week at the end of the last week's blind, you said, "Oh, it's like that eggy Kragelicky that we had." I am getting it. When I, when I put the water down first and... So maybe a few drops of water in the full strength help to get rid of that. I'm going to put some water in. You can do what you like with yours. Okay, what what else have we got? A little bit... A little bit honey and a little bit chocolate dust, but and it's also, dark uh, fruits. Stuff, uh, not crassy, but herbs. Mm. Bitter herbs. And a friendly bit. Oh yeah, that's quite bitter herb tea leaves, isn't it? Here comes the eggy thing. Okay, let's go to the picture for a minute. So yeah, lots and lots of dark 
fruits, purple fruits. <laughs> the purple kind of is a, a reference to the sulfur as well. And this yellow is a is sort of the eggy thing. And there is a bit of pepperiness over the top of the egginess. But it's certainly intense. It's certainly in the category of Sherry Monster. The only oh. thing is the finish. The finish, it's slightly cabbage water. <laughs> But I think the more that we try it, the more that that seems to have gone away. Does it taste like an older or younger whiskey? I think it tastes older. Oh yeah, oh, finish. Compared to the Macallan Classic Cut, there's definitely a lot more going on on a longer finish. I don't think it's the Cavlan, because I think that would be more like that forced woodiness. Tamdu, I think, is likely to be cleaner. I don't know about Tamdu. Only the space. Uh, I know it's an empty box because the bottle's downstairs. This Cadenhead is a is a 56% Glen Rothis, which I know is all sherry. I'm going to go for that. I know nothing about it, but I have tasted before, so I know it is. Let's see if it tastes anything like it. I, I would say you prefer the more of that. That's true. Then you decide whether you want it on the shelf above it or mm. not. It's got that grassy thing that's a little bit like Deanston. Mmm. Wow, that is fantastic. Oh. Well, I think not a very clean. I can't bake with it very dirty. That's a lovely um, 13 year old bottle, though. It's beautiful. If you, if you haven't got I, a Craig. I should give a foot step up to that one. I must. If you haven't got a Craig Ellicky 13, you haven't tried it, go and get one. Okay. Does it taste anything like Craig Ellicky? Wow, that's so deeper and richer. It's fully... Wow, power. It's fully... Uh, just some in sherry. So I'm going to... Maybe. Does it a touch of... A touch of Hey! <laughs> Not only a patron, but a super chatter as well. Fantastic. Patrice. Star. Thank you very much. Oh, hang oh. on. Uh, uh, I give it the... That means you're going into our next drawing. I forgot that the flavour keeps going on and on. It's safe for our time. It's not for the time. That's what I like it. A bit like us going on and on instead of revealing it. Okay, Patrice, <laughs> you're going into the next drawing. I think it's just you and Jason in there at the moment. <laughs> Ready for the reveal? Has everyone got their guesses in? I'm going with the Glen Rothes. Deepa's going for the Craig Ellicky. No changes? Not changing no. my... It's very unique. Okay, it is... Ooh, 57.5%. It's 23 years old. Oh, it's expensive. This costs us about two hundred and seventy dollars, oh. and it is a Craig Ellicky. And you know what that means? That means deeper again. Well, let's start with me. <laughs> oh, I feel my fire fuck. Drew. Oh, you got me. Oh, thank oh. you very much. Oh, oh I see Drew. We, um, hang on, Greg, Greg as well. Greg, wow, it's like we're really reining in the, uh, the money here. Thank you very much, Greg. I'm just going to write Drew. And I'm going to get it all finished. And I'm not getting much of the icky flavor now. So maybe because it was there for two hours. I just realized, Drew, put your name in. You got called out. Uh, you got pulled out of the hat on one of our earlier drawings. And I sent you some of this, didn't I? Oh. So it's the same one. You know that super sherry monster? So maybe comment something if you haven't already. I might have missed it. About if you can remember anything about it. This is a single cask uh, only for the US. Let me see if I can get a little closer. Uh, 
And um, this bottle is a more expensive bottle. It's somewhere around $280, something like that. And the, the regular 23 year old is, can be found for about 230, although the price, well, what's going on, Jason? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, oh, oh, I, I, I discussed, I know, I very thick discussed it. I the more I forget, the more I like it because it's so. Jason, stop. This is going to be number 96. Oh, dusty, dusty bottle. That's been on the shelf for a while. You know, some of these bottles have been on the shelf for 18 months now. Oh! If it's a problem, that's a problem, not a problem. I don't know if you know the rules, Drew, but <clears throat> if it's a bourbon, we get to have another pick now because <laughs> we, um... we, we have been throwing bourbons off the shelf.